Hello students, in the last video we have completed the frog's morphology. So in this video we are going to start the physiology part. So in two videos I will going to complete the physiology. So first of all, first uh, system we are going to start that is the digestive system. So if it is a digestive system of cockroach then what type of digestive system it has? Okay, so first of all we need to know that it is going to have a complete digestive system complete digestive tract okay so they are going to have a complete digestive tract what is the meaning of complete digestive tract that this going to have this organism is going to have a separate mouth and a separate opening that is called cloaca in this uh, case and to join this mouth and the cloaca they are going to have one long that is a elementary gap now uh, this organism, this is a carnivorous animal. Okay, so as it is a carnivorous animal, so uh, what type of, what is the length should be, right? So one thing remember, if it is a herbivorous animal, they have the longest elementary canal. If it is an omnivorous animal, they are going to have also a long elementary canal. That is not like longest, uh, but yes. If it is in case of the uh, herbivores, they have the longest alimentary canal. Uh, omnivorous and animals, they also have a long alimentary canal. And the carnivorous animal, they have the shortest uh, alimentary canal. Okay, so remember that carnivorous animals, so they are going to have the shortest GI tract or alimentary canal. Okay, so this thing you have to know. Now, after that, just see if it is coming to the digestive system, how many things that will form the whole digestive system, okay? So, they have the system basically made up of the glands. So, they're going to have two glands here. One is the liver, right? And another is the pancreas. So, they're going to have the liver and the pancreas. And along with that, they have the GI tract. Now, first of all, if it is their mouth, how does mouth look like? Right. So just see, suppose this is the mouth, it is opening its mouth. So remember that this organism is going to have only the teeth on the upper jaw. Okay. So the teeth, they are present only in the upper jaws. Okay. Remember that. All of the teeth, they are triangular. It is of same shape and structure. So that's why they have the homodont type of teeth. Homodont type of teeth means all of the teeth, they are similar in shape. Okay. See, if it is in case of us, our teeth is of four different types. Incisors, canine, premolars, molars. In case of them, that is going to be only one type. So that's why they have the homodont type of teeth. The teeth is very much superficially just attached by a fibrous connective tissue with the jaws okay so every time they catch a prey maybe two three teeth fall off okay because they're not embedded in the socket like us our teeth do not fall off isn't that in case of them the teeth is uh, so superficially attached to the jaws so they don't have any type of uh, cavity or socket like thing they don't have so they're just superficially attached so that's why that type of teeth where it is just attached superficially with the jaws that is known as the acrodont type of teeth and as they have the acrodont type of teeth so they have very much possibilities that the teeth can fall off so whenever the teeth fall once again they grow okay in case of us what happened it is embedded inside the socket so that's why the teeth do not fall off our teeth Two sets of teeth we have. One is the milk set, another is the permanent set. In case of them, what is happening? As a number of sets, they grow in their whole lifetime. So that's why, but we can say that they're going to have the polyphyodont type of teeth. Okay, so remember that they're going to have the polyphyodont type of teeth, right? That means they have number of sets in their lifetime. We have only two sets, so we are diphyodont. Okay, in case of them, that is polyphyodont, right? So, these three points you need to know. Next one, in case of the tongue. Okay, so remember that. What is the tongue? What is the characteristics? So, this tongue is anteriorly. Okay, so this tongue is anteriorly attached okay 
and posteriorly it is open okay posteriorly it is open right so the tongue suppose this is a tongue it is attached like this and posteriorly it is open they roll and whenever they need to uh, suppose catch a prey they will just open the tongue with their tongue is sticky tongue and with the help of the tongue they can catch the flies mosquito any type of food they want okay so that is the characteristics of the tongue it is sticky right so why it is sticky so that the predator that prey that can be catch easily so that the prey get attached to their tongue okay so that is about the first point right now after that just see in that mouth suppose this is the buccal cavity in the buccal cavity they are going to have two opening one is the opening for the digestive system another is the opening for the respiratory system okay so the opening of the digestive system what we can call it this is known as the gullet okay this is the gullet right so i will draw it from the gullet so this is the gullet okay now from the gullet this is the gullet right from the gullet a small esophagus is here right the esophagus is very much small actually uh, unlike us our mouth the buccal cavity on either side we have the salivary glands right in case of the oh sorry i'm saying here it is cockroach <laughs> no this is the frog okay so yeah <laughs> So, what is it? See, in case of the frog, what happened? Uh, in case of the frog, they have the gullet, then a small esophagus they have. Then after that, they are going to have a stomach, a lobe-like structure they have. This is the stomach. Okay. In the stomach, what they have? They have the hydrochloric acid and the protein digesting enzyme that is pepsin but it is found in the pepsinogen inactivated state so from this stomach one tube that is coming out that will be known as the duodenum right so this duodenum is short it is not that much coiled and in this region of the duodenum what they are going to have one opening of a duct okay so this is the opening of the duct so this opening will have two parts one that is the pancreas okay so this is the pancreas and second one this is the structure this is actually the liver okay so this is the liver so this liver have two lobes actually large liver okay so this is the liver now in the same region what they have to store the bile here in the liver they are going to have a very small another structure what is that this is the gallbladder okay so here they are going to have the gallbladder right this is the liver so you just see there is one common opening of the duct one opening this is attaching to the pancreas pancreas will release the pancreatic juice into the duodenum and this is the bilobe structure that is the uh, liver liver stores the bile in which region that is in the gallbladder so here this is the gallbladder so secretion will pour here so liver and the pancreas both of them they will secrete the secretion into the duodenum okay so small intestine has been started right so duodenum is the first part of the small intestine then after that they are going to have a coiled yeah coiled tube like structure so this is the small intestine right so first of all they have the duodenum and this next part this is the ileum so ileum is the region where after digestion the food is been absorbed okay so this is the ileum region itself where the food is been absorbed right now after that the large intestine large intestine will have only one part that is the large tube like structure that is the rectum okay so this is the large intestine large intestine have only one part this rectum represents the large intestine and this large intestine will have this opening that opening is the cloaca so this is the cloaca this opening is the cloacal aperture okay 
cloacal aperture through which the undigested food remains that will be removed outside okay so you can see their digestive system how many parts they have first of all gullet first part this is the gullet okay this is the gullet this is the respiratory tract opening that is the uh, glottis region so whenever we will discuss respiration you will understand that part so this is the opening of the digestive tract that is the gullet this is the gullet then the esophagus then the stomach this is the stomach then after that this is the duodenum this is the ileum duodenum and ileum that represents the small intestine right then after that the next part sixth part this is the rectum that represents the large intestine okay then after that the opening that is the cloaca remember one thing what is the cloaca how it is different from the anus right so this is the cloaca which is the common opening as already i have mentioned in the earlier video that the cloaca it's the common opening for the fecal matter fecus then fecus then the urine as well as the gamete for the males okay as well as the females so what happened gamete urine and fecal matter that will be removed with the same opening that that's why this opening we cannot call it as the anus right so it is a common opening through which all these three things they come outside that is the common opening called cloaca remember that so that is about the digestive system so how they will be digested the food is going to be digested see the process of digestion okay process of digestion that will include see how the food will be digested right so first of all they lack the salivary gland so why the salivary gland will be needed right because the carbohydrate that have to be digested starch have to be digested as the frog is already carnivorous animal they are not going to take carbohydrate right the carbohydrate is not going to be digested so they are going to have the protein and the lipid so this protein and the lipid that will be acted upon by the stomach's pepsin which will be activated by the action of the hydrochloric acid and this lipid that will be digested by the bile that has been released from the uh, liver and the pancreas which is releasing the pancreatic juice which will digest both the protein and the lipid so pancreatic juice that will release into the into the duodenum region which is going to digest both the protein and the lipid so up to the duodenum our first part of the ileum most of the food is been digested so after that the digested food remains that will be absorbed in the ileum region right so ileum is the region where the food is absorbed okay so this is about the digestion and absorption of the frog okay remember one point that what type of teeth they have the tongue which is anteriorly attached here this is attached and posteriorly it opens whenever they need to catch a prey they will just uh, uh, they just open and they take uh, take the food product okay next one if it is the um, digestive tract this is very much short why because this is a carnivorous animal okay the common opening of the digestive system of the excretory system as well as the reproductive system the common opening this is called as the cloaca okay remember that so this is about the digestion digestive system of the frog after that let us move to the respiratory system After that, let us see the next physiological system of the frog, that is respiratory system. So, uh, in case of this frog, remember that they are going to have four different type of respiratory respiratory organs, right? So, first of all, the organ is gill. Okay. So we know that the gill, that respiration, uh, if it occurs through the gill, what we can call it. This is known as the branchial respiration, right? So this is the branchial respiration. 
Now, how and when it is uh, uh, the organism use the gill, right? So, in case of this frog, the respiratory organ will be gill whenever this is in the larval stage, that is in the tadpole stage, okay? Remember, whenever the tadpole that are aquatic, we all know that the tadpole is aquatic animal. So, whenever they are in the tadpole stage, then they have the organ that is gill and that's why the respiratory system, the respiration, the type of respiration is called as the branchial respiration. The second one, the next type of system, what we can call it, this is the cutaneous respiration. Okay, now what is the cutaneous respiration? Cutaneous respiration means the organ, here the organ is the skin. Okay, remember that the respiration is called as cutaneous respiration whenever they have the skin as the respiratory organ. Now, when does frog use skin? Isn't that? So, the frog use skin whenever they are hibernating, whenever they are in the state of hibernation or the winter sleep, estivation or the summer sleep as well as whenever it is in the aquatic environment okay so the frog that uh, also that organism also can swim in the water they can live inside water so whenever the frog the adults they don't have the guilt so in that time period the lung is uh, the respiratory organ so the lung cannot take the dissolved oxygen from the water so whenever the frog is underwater at that period of time the skin will act as a respiratory organ so in the aquatic environment the frog use the skin one thing you need to know that every skin will not be acting as a respiratory organ when we can call that yes the skin is capable of having cutaneous respiration whenever the skin is very much thin then moist obviously that skin have to be moist then only the diffusion of gases can be possible so the skin have the mucus gland so mucus will be released by the mucus gland and it will uh, completely cover the space the upper surface area so that's why it is moist then only cutaneous respiration can be possible and the third one that need to be very very much vascular vascular means more and more blood vessel can be present then only it is possible that the respiration can take space through the skin okay so they have the cutaneous respiration whenever they will be summer sleeping winter sleeping or in the aquatic medium next one the third type what we can see that organism also have the pulmonary respiration okay and the, another type of respiration is also present so this is known as the bacopharyngeal respiration okay so bacopharyngeal respiration and pulmonary respiration both i will tell you in the same diagram so just see whenever they have pulmonary respiration the organ is the lung okay and whenever they have the bacopharyngeal respiration they have the buccal cavity and the pharyngeal cavity or that skin then only that organism have the bacopharyngeal respiration. So when this organism use the pulmonary respiration lung and bacopharyngeal cavity, bacopharyngeal respiration, whenever that frog is in the, <clears throat> in which states it is in the land form, okay, whenever it is in the terrestrial condition, okay, then only it is possible that they can have the uh, pulmonary respiration and the bacopharyngeal respiration. Now let us see when this organism can have this pulmonary and bacopharyngeal respiration, right? So just see, first of all, this is the frog, okay? This is the nostril, okay? So this is the nostril. So whenever they take the gas inhalation occurs so let me say, tell here that this is the inspiration okay 
So whenever they have inspiration, then what happens? See, this part, this is the buccal cavity and the pharynx region. So here I will write, this is the buccopharyngeal cavity or buccopharyngeal membrane. So this membrane is also, okay, so suppose this is the buccopharyngeal membrane that is also very very much thin moist and vascular then after that here this is going to have this opening okay this is the bronchi so this bronchi will lead to the lungs okay so on either side they are going to have two lungs so these are the lungs they are going to have two bronchi okay now whenever they have inspiration okay whenever they have inspiration what happen the nostril will be open but the opening of the bronchi is closed okay this nostril will open whenever they have inspiration then the opening of the bronchi that will be closed so whenever they take the gas inside then what will happen? Where the gas will go? Isn't that? So does the, that gas that will be trapped here in the bac bacopharyngeal region. So in this bacopharyngeal cavity that is going to be more and more that will going to get a little bit depressed. That means this bacopharyngeal region that will going to be a little bit swelling. Okay. And in that region in this period of time what happened this buccopharyngeal cavity they take the gas directly okay as the skin is also very much thin moist and vascular then at that period of time what will happen that cavity buccopharyngeal lining they take the gas directly gas is taken directly Okay, so they perform the buccopharyngeal respiration. Whenever they inspirate, the gas will enter through this nostril. This opening of the bronchi that will be closed. So that's why the gas is trapped in the buccopharyngeal cavity. Buccopharyngeal membrane, they take the gas. Okay, and after that, the next step. After that, what will be the next step? So whenever they will have the expiration. Okay, that means in the next step, what will happen? The opening of the bronchi that will open. Okay, now after that the gas will go and in that period of time this nostril that will be closed. So this nostril opening that will be closed. The opening of the bronchi that will be open and from the buccopharyngeal region the gas will actually this region, this buccopharyngeal region will elevate so that the gas will go into the bronchi and that after that they are going to have, these are the small sac-like structures, those sac-like structures are known as the alveoli. So, this alveoli take the gas, okay, right? So, this way they will have the uh, next pulmonary respiration. Then after that, the gas will be propelled outside. Once again, this will be open, the gas will be removed outside, right? So, this way this organism will have respiration okay just remember they will have four type of respiratory uh, organs what are they one is the gill whenever they are in the tadpole stage because this tadpole is aquatic right the next one they have the cutaneous respiration when they are hibernating estivating or in the aquatic environment if that is in the adult state frog okay then this organism use the skin the skin have to be thin moist and vascular then only it is possible then they can have cutaneous respiration third one and the fourth one that is pulmonary and buccopharyngeal respiration whenever the frog is in the land or in the terrestrial condition so this is the buccopharyngeal respiration and this one this is the pulmonary respiration so this way respiratory system uh, we have completed after that let us move to the circulatory system after that let us see the circulatory system of the frog so first of all we should know that circulatory system is composed of what right so in case of them the circulatory system is composed of blood vascular system that means this is the uh, blood 
vascular means vessels blood vascular system along with that they have the another system that is the lymphatic system too so what is lymphatic system i already have told you in the connective tissue uh, how this lymph is created it is actually filtered from the blood vessel some amount of blood is squeezed outside and it will go to the tissue space okay so that is the lymphatic system okay in the blood vascular system they have the blood they have the vessels and after that they have the heart also right if it is the lymphatic system they have the lymphatic nodes or the lymph nodes the lymph vessels also they have and yes they have the pulsatile pulsatile uh, lymphatic heart or lymph heart which will pump the lymph also okay so this is a circulatory system so this circulatory system will pump the uh, will actually transport the nutrients as well as the gases the color of the blood in case of the frog that is red in color now this blood if you see it's basically made up of the plasma the liquid component this liquid will have the wbc then water around 90 percent then very few proteins are there okay few proteins are present and basically this plasma will have the uh, that uh, uh, that protein basically um, very few okay and uh, nutrients and the gases will be present in the plasma if you see the next that is the components that means the cells how many types of cells are present see the wbc's that are already present wbc is also present in the plasma then this wbc that will uh, what is the function of wbc that will kill the foreign particles okay it is having the immunological function next one rbc rbc is round and remember it is nucleated okay that have the nucleus which is uh, not present in case of human human have un a nucleated rbc next one they have the thrombocyte okay so this thrombocyte is also nucleated so they are going to have all of the cells they are true cells okay in case of human only the wbc have the nucleus otherwise this rbc and the thrombocyte thrombocyte means the platelet platelet and uh, rbc don't have the nucleus but in case of the frog they have the rbc wbc platelet all of the three will have the nucleus of its own okay now after that let us move to the structure of the heart how the heart will work right so if you see the heart how heart is how many chambered organ okay heart is in case of the frog it is three chambered okay and in the heart the mixing of blood occurs mixing of blood means in case of them separate uh, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will flow but here mixing of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood will occur if you see the heart then how the heart will look like they are going to have two auricles this, are the, this is the right auricle then this is the left auricle okay then after that they are going to have a single ventricle right done so these two auricles will be separated by the interauricular septum so these are the three chambered heart that is three chambered now so two auricles and one ventricle will be present now after that if you see this uh, another chambers also are present okay see first of all this right side is deoxygenated so it is going to have the post cable and the pre cable that means these are the veins nothing but it is the vein so this vein that will collect the blood into a secondary chamber that chamber is known as the sinus venosus okay so this sinus venosus will take the deoxygenated blood this is dob means deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body and it will enter into the right atrium this right atrium pump the blood to the ventricle and from the ventricle blood will pump outside by one another structure what is that this is one uh, vessel that vessel is known as the truncus arteriosus okay so this truncus arteriosus 
take the deoxygenated blood in this case. So, truncus arteriosus will pump the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. In the lung, the deoxygenated blood will be oxygenated. Then after that, oxygenated blood will enter into the left atrium, okay, by the pulmonary veins, okay. So, these are the pulmonary these are the pulmonary veins who will take the oxygenated blood from the lungs okay then after that from the left atrium the blood will be pumped to the ventricle from the ventricle blood will be once again come out to through the same that is truncus arteriosus to the different parts of the body so this will be divided into uh, small small nano vessels is it will go to the different parts of the body it is tissue and the another part the another vessel that will go to the lung so in the lung the blood deoxygenated blood will be uh, oxygenated from this lung the blood will enter into the uh, left atrium via the pulmonary veins okay so this is how the blood is been pumped okay once again i will tell you about the circulation of the blood okay so how the circulation will occur see first of all this is the tissue from the tissue deoxygenated blood will enter into the sinus venosus via these veins okay then after that from the sinus venosus it will go to the right atrium from the right atrium to the ventricle from the ventricle to the truncus arteriosus truncus arteriosus to the lung in the lung the blood get oxygenated oxygenated blood will come now once again into the heart via this pulmonary vein into the left atrium in the left atrium the blood will be pumped to the next part that is the ventricle in the ventricle both oxygenated and deoxygenated blood is been mixing isn't that so from this ventricle blood is been now pumped to this truncus arteriosus same see in the vein and in the truncus arteriosus blood both the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood get mixed right now from the same truncus arteriosus the vessel that get branched and one vessel will go to the different parts of the body carrying the oxygenated blood as well as the nutrients so this is about the circulatory system i hope you understand okay so three chambered heart the circulation how it will occur you just write it down make a note read the book so this way we have completed the three system that is digestion respiration and the circulation in the next video we will see the nervous regulation endocrine system that's not that too much then uh, excretory system and the reproductive system so that's all about the first video of the physiological system of frog i hope you understand thank you